happen about what steps can be taken to help reduce the number of migrants who are coming to the U.S.-Mexico border. So fair to characterize it as these agreements were struck recently, I mean, and in the past few weeks, would it be fair to say that? I think that's, that's fair to say, but I would also say that they, often these discussions are ongoing over a period of time and take place at several levels of uh, the government, both here and within these countries. And, and is the plan to sort of apprehend these migrants who, who are trying to cross the border or sort of as they're already on their way to the United States, is the plan to sort of, you know, um, stop them there? How, how will this work? You'd have to speak with these countries about how they will be implementing. I think the objective is to make it more difficult to make the journey and make uh, crossing the borders more, more difficult. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Kelly. On Minnesota and another officer involved shooting that resulted in the death of an African American man, uh, has the White House been in touch with Governor Walls or are there any resources from the federal government uh, that are being offered? And this comes at a time when obviously the Chauvin trial is progressing. Uh, is there a federal plan for when that trial reaches its conclusion, whatever the outcome may be? Um, and thirdly, I'm racing through them because we're short on time today. Mm -hmm. uh, the president had promised as a candidate a police commission mm -hmm. that Dr. Rice says will not go forward at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems obviously that officer involved interactions with the public are intensely important at the moment. Uh, so first on Minnesota, and if you could address the police commission sure. going forward. Sure, and just check me if I don't get to all of your questions, I will try to do my best. Uh, let me first say that we are uh, incredibly saddened. Uh, we were incredibly saddened to hear about the loss of life at the hands of law enforcement in Minnesota yesterday. The president has, of course, been briefed. He will have a few words he will share at the top of the semiconductor event that will be uh, starting shortly. Hence, we'll be moving through our questions here about his own thoughts. Uh, we are also in touch with the governor, in touch with the mayor, in touch with local uh, enforcement, law enforcement authorities as well. Uh, I would say it is a reminder of um, the pain, the anger, the trauma, the exhaustion that many communities across the country have felt as we see uh, these incidents uh, continue to occur within just a few miles of, uh, of where the tragic events happened just a year ago. Uh, in terms of the police commission, um, we uh, have been in very close contact uh, over the course of several months back to the transition with both civil rights activists, with law enforcement uh, authorities and the law enforcement community about what would be most effective moving forward. And as Dr. Uh, Rice uh, conveyed, or, or I think the statement we put out, I should say, uh, conveyed, uh, we have made a decision in coordination that the best path forward is to work to the past to uh, pass the George Floyd uh, Policing Act, that that has a, a great deal of the content of the policy changes of the necessary reforms uh, that we would all like to see in place. So that was a collective decision, and that's where our focus will be. And is this a delay, or do you expect it to just not go forward at all? Well, we expect, uh, for the time being, for our focus to be on moving the legislation forward and not on the Policing Commission. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned, you know, the focus is now on passing the George Floyd Policing Act. It's been over a month since we've heard the president talk about this, though. We haven't seen a big push, at least not publicly, mm -hmm. from this administration. What kind of steps uh, are you taking to pressure Congress on this, and should we expect to see this sort of rise on the list of your priorities? You obviously have a very full plate. We do, uh, but I would say that uh, the president uh, was um, uh, addressing racial equity, ensuring that we are putting in place uh, long overdue reforms, real change is a priority for him. It is something he uh, looks forward to continuing to discuss with members of Congress. Uh, he believes that there is a path forward, that this piece of legislation offers that path forward, uh, and uh, he is certainly will use uh, uh, the power of his presidency to move it forward. You mentioned that civil rights groups recommended against this commission. Did they put forth other recommendations, steps that the White House can take while you try and pressure Congress and wait and hope that the Senate will act on them? Well, we, of course, are in very close touch with them. I think what is, uh, in, I, I should say more specifically, we've been in touch with um, a range of groups, including the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the Leadership Con Congre uh, 
conference, I'm sorry, as well as leading experts. And the strong consensus from all of these groups is that uh, the work should be focused on trying to pass the George Flight Act, and the commission would not be the most constructive way to deliver on our top priority. So we are working together collectively to do exactly that. There are steps that we uh, certainly uh, will work in conjunction to take uh, as, as, as they are possible, uh, and some of them we've signed through executive orders, and we'll continue to communicate with these groups about what is most effective. Just quickly on infrastructure, the president is having this bipartisan meeting today, but what is your message to some congressional Republicans who have expressed skepticism about whether the White House is authentically interested in negotiating here, given how things played out with the COVID relief bill? Well, I would say that the president, you don't use the president of the United States' time multiple times over, including two infrastructure meetings, bipartisan infrastructure meetings he's already had, or the meeting today if he did not want to authentically hear from the members attending about their ideas, about how to move forward this package in a bipartisan manner. So is he willing to negotiate on the scope and the price tag or just on, on ways to pay for this? He absolutely is. He looks forward to hearing their ideas. Uh, and his objective is to uh, find a way forward where we can modernize our nation's infrastructure so we can compete with China. Uh, he's proposed a way to pay for it, which is what he thinks the responsible thing is to do. And he hopes they'll come to the table with ideas.